What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you GLS and Genesis League goals content today. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning, so come by and say hello. All right, guys. Well, we had another town hall today on July 21st, 2023, for the Genesis League goals game, which just dropped its brand new closed beta for the game. Now, before we get into any of this, uh, let me preface with a couple things. One, um, this is not a full summary for people who might be new to the channel or new to the series. This is just the five things that stuck out to me. I'm not sure if the team puts out an official town hall summary, uh, but we can check for that later. And um, and I'm not sure if anybody else is really covering it, but there are fantastic uh, written and, and visual content creators or video content creators in the space. Uh, NFT gaming and collectibles are one of them. So make sure you go and check them out. Give them a shout out there. Uh, the other thing is that with the closed beta launch, I have actually not yet had a chance to play so i want to make sure that i put that out there and let you guys know uh so that you can take all of my commentary here with a you know, potentially a grain of salt because i haven't actually tried the game yet although there's not much about the game necessarily in terms of like what the actual beta or demo was like uh but just more so kind of high level things to keep in mind or uh be on the lookout for so with that being said these are the five biggest things let's go ahead and jump right in the first one and probably the most exciting is that there is going to be a skills burn event in the near future now I'll be honest, I went through and I listened to this a couple of times and it sounds, it, it was a little confusing. Um, so I'm not really sure what to expect and what will be what will be on the menu for this and how it's going to work. But it sounds like we're gonna get more information very soon from Chicklet and Chatter. So I would say just have this on your horizon. Don't worry about the details. All I can tell you right now is that you'll be able to burn GLUSD for skills, and that will be one of the ways in which they introduce skills into the game. So sk keep in mind, skills will also be a way to uh, give rewards out so people will be able to earn them once that's live. But it sounds as though that they just want everybody to have skills available on the launch of the actual game. So this is kind of how they're planning to do it. And there, there's going to be like merch giveaways for the top 10 and all that. So I, I don't know what it looks like just yet, but this could lead to a significant amount of GLUSD being burned. And if we run out of GLUSD for any reason, well, then we can move over to burning GLX, which uh, right now is trading at about a penny. So again, we'll wait for more details on that, but I would assume if the game is coming out or, or, uh, by the end of this month or maybe even early next month, we can probably see something similar. And if you were part of the Splinterlands five-year anniversary, right, the, the great burning event that happened with Splinterlands or within Splinterlands, they kind of reference that. This is exactly what they're trying to go for to help launch the game. So I don't know all the details. We don't know all the details, but keep that in mind. It could be something that is great to help reset the tokenomics uh, and the game economy. Number two, uh, again, so I haven't played the game yet, but what it sounds like is that the coach abilities were a bit... <laughs> a bit unbalanced. And uh, so the team is going back through right now to add a little bit more nuance. And I, you know, the example given for it is that the, the coaches were given kind of like a flat bonus or nerf across the board. And so people were like, wait, how is it so easy to score from like, how are your defenders able to score? That's so, that's too crazy. But it's really because the coaches were giving like, you know, a flat ability or a flat boost across the board. So that's something that they're going back through and looking at. And again, this is, this is a reason why they're doing the closed beta first and they'll probably launch the game first without any rewards just to see how people uh, just to see how people use it, how people abuse it, right, in order for them to go through and make sure everything is working fine. But, um, you know, things like that, I think, are, are good. If you're wondering what's happening with the coaches, that is something that they are looking into now. And as I said, I don't have any visibility to the game as it as it stands. I am looking forward to when the game fully launches, if they're able to get that out by the end of the month or early next month, I will be jumping in. That is for sure. Number three, we are we're ripping right through these marketing. Now, this is interesting. Chatter was on and he, he gave a couple of different things for marketing. Of course, uh, a, a lot of it is very just uh, a generic. That's not a shade. Of, uh, that's not shade of chatter. It's just very generic. Like they're, they're going to activate a lot of the, the SEO and stuff like that. But there were two things within marketing that he, he mentioned. So the MLS player ads are set to go live uh, next week. And if you remember, um, Chatter had actually talked about this on a previous town hall where he said that they had some kind of like Snapchat deal or Snapchat credit. Um, so I uh, Snapchat credit that needed to be used or start being used by the 25th. So I think that's that's essentially what this is, uh, if I had to guess. 
And on top of that, I back then I was just like, it would be great if the game was like out around this time too, because you want to have something for people to see if you're you're bringing them along. So MLS players are going to be posting. The team is going to take a lot of those videos and then repurpose them for other ads as well. That sounds pretty cool. The other side of this, which is probably more exciting for me, being the uh, the more like you know crypto DeFi person is the simple fact that liquidity pools and DeFi partnerships were mentioned as well. Now, I don't know when liquidity pools are going live, and I don't know that there's necessarily partnerships with that, but keep in mind that there are going to be, or there is a reward pool for LPs. Uh, and this, I'm assuming, would probably be similar to Splinterlands, where it's bridged out to Ethereum and the BNB chain, right? At least, at least to start with. Now, in terms of DeFi partnerships, when I think back to early on, especially during like the bull run or even, you know, post bull run at the beginning of the bear, there was a period of time in which I could take the cake token, uh, sorry, the cake token, uh, which is for pancake swap. And that runs on the BNB chain, one of the biggest DeFi platforms, DeFi or DeFi exchanges um, on the on the BNB chain. You could stake the cake token in order to earn SPS. And that that lasted for a while. There were certain you know allocations for that. I don't know if that's necessarily the case here. I don't remember seeing that in the white paper, but again, it's it's one of those things where they did it for Splinterlands and I'm just remembering it and kind of recounting it here because I wouldn't be surprised if we see something like that or you know some, something similar. Again, I don't know how it's all gonna play out. My expectation is that we will bridge out to the ETH and BNB chains at a certain point and probably better sooner rather than later because if you think about it hive is still very small and if you're going to be reaching out to the masses right reaching out to the masses a hundred million uh 100 million mls fans out there they've probably heard of ethereum they might have heard of bnb they probably haven't heard of Hive unless they're very deep into the crypto eco space. So I think that it's probably well within the team's interest to get those going. So that's my understanding. I could be very wrong. I'm, you know, that I'm just saying that that's kind of where where I'm looking at from a, a whole marketing perspective. Uh, so we'll wait and see. But uh, August sounds like it could potentially be interesting. I, I, they didn't say that it would be in August, but obviously the MLS player ads are starting up, and then hopefully LPs are going to be something that goes live in the future. And if you remember back, we had that incident, which I'm not going to go uh, into too much detail about, but it was due to low liquidity. So the, the more we can get people to add liquidity and incentivize them to add liquidity will not or, or hopefully run into that issue less, right? Obviously, the team put in a fix to have it be like a running average, I think, of like six or 12 hours. But at this point, I think just adding liquidity in general is good for not only bringing in players potentially, but also larger investors into the game. So that is number three. That is marketing. Now, th the next two were questions asked uh, during the, the town hall. And um, I I'll kind of recite what the question was and what the, what the answers given were, because I, th I thought they were interesting. I hadn't really thought about them. So the first one, uh, Synergy will be will, will keep coaches and players on the same team. The question that was asked was, what is going to stop someone from like maybe buying or investing in like one coach and then just moving them from team to team to team and then playing until all those teams are all the way down, right? Because I don't, I don't think that coaches have like an energy bar uh, in the same way that players do. Again, I, please, please correct me if I'm wrong. But that was countered by Z during the town hall saying that the synergy that a team has is always going to be affected whenever players or coaches change, right? Move in and off the team. So I actually like that a lot. I think that it was a fantastic answer or fantastic design if that's how they have it designed or are planning to design it because you want to keep the team, you, like basically if your team is doing well and they're growing together, you want to make as few changes as possible. The only time you should be making major changes to the team that would be resetting your synergy or, you know, our busting it down a little bit, whatever, whatever, whatever it actually ends up doing to your synergy is if you all of a sudden going to add in like a huge player, right? Because the parallels to what this looks like from a larger, <laughs> like an actual sports uh, metaphor, right? And specifically the MLS or just any kind of soccer slash football uh, team or sports team really is like, you're only going to shake things up. If you have a good vibe on your team, right? You're only going to shake things up if you can get like a superstar who can come in. And then hopefully you like, that's going to reset the synergy. It's going to reset the vibe. And over time, you want that to continue building up and, and getting better and better and better. So in the same way, I think that synergy will be a good way for uh, 
a, a good way to prevent teams from just running rampant and sharing players all around. Like that's not how it should be. So if Synergy is designed to do that in mind, it's something that I hadn't really thought about before and I thought was uh, was worth sharing. And then number five, we'll close it out with this. Somebody asked a simple question, why would we add reserves, right? If you can just play with your team, why would you need to? And, and here's the interesting thing. Uh, Z, Z was just like, I mean, honestly, you technically don't have to, right? Because uh, overall, it's just like if you just want to play with your guys and run them, to, run them to the ground and then that's it, that's it, right? You have your, your starters and your subs. You don't need reserves. But he did give three things, the first of which is XP, right? So I, from my understanding, even your reserves who are not playing in the game, every match that they're involved with because they're on the team, they are going to be gaining some kind of experience. On top of that, adding players, right, and, and rounding out your team increases the overall synergy of the team. So even if you have players that you're not planning on using, you want them there because they add synergy to the overall vibe. Again, I don't know how all of that works, but XP and synergy were the, the main things that he gave as a response. And then finally, if you actually do want to invest in having a solid all-around team that has not just good players, not just good subs, subs but uh, also good reserves, you could essentially earn a lot more by doing that. So in a way, when I think about it, it's like, okay, you could have like two coaches, two teams, and just kind of like build them up and they wouldn't have any reserves. And sure, you could kind of do the same thing, but you'd be playing a bunch more games uh, and you wouldn't be getting the benefits. Well, you'd play the same amount of games, but you wouldn't be getting the benefits of of uh, like the other half of players when you're not actually, um, if you're not actually playing with them. And what I mean by it is like, Okay, let's say let's say you were to buy um, 24 cards and you were to split them like 12 and 12 into each team. When you're playing, if, if when you're playing with team A, team B is not getting any XP, right? And there's no synergy bonuses by having more people on the same team, right? And so let's say you play 20 matches with team A and then 20 matches with team B. Well, again, you're not getting the crossover bonuses whereas if you were to take all 24 cards and it's not 24, I think it's like 22, but you get my point. Uh, if you were to make just one team and then essentially have what your B team would be sitting on the bench, when you're playing all the games with your A team, your B team is earning experience that entire time. And then you can go in without changing your team, right? You're not, you're not uh, messing up the synergy of your team, but you could essentially bench your starting lineup when they are all you know, tired or their stamina and morale are down. And then put in your B team, which would be on the same team, right? So now I'm talking about the same team, but essentially put in your reserves and then have them play. And then you do another 20 games while everybody is still earning experience. So, you know, for me, again, I don't really know what my relationship with the game is going to be. Obviously, I'm not going in and I'm not going to be maxing out cards and trying to play at the, the highest levels. But this, this does convince me that instead of just buying like, you know, seven starters and five subs and a coach, I should be looking into reserves and maybe even thinking long term, like, OK, who are who are like reserves that I would want to build up over time and not just be like, oh, this card is like the cheapest one on the market. Let me just get it to fill it out. Right. So I'm, I'm planning to be a little bit more thoughtful because of that response. So that is the five biggest things from the town hall. It was a short one. I mean, it lasted about an hour and I think they even started late just due to some technical difficulties. So, you know, exciting times ahead. I know that there's been a lot of hot and cold, <laughs> a lot of hot and cold responses to the uh, to the closed beta. And I, I will say this, right? Like the team actually took that one on the chin. They, they answered it and they said, you know, this is not the final version. This is just a way to get things out. Um, and ultimately, I'm I'm personally not too worried about it. Uh, I want to see what this game looks like, not in the first six minutes, but after the first six months, right? So, or the first six days, I would, I want to see what it looks like in six months. So this is something that obviously, I mean, I have GLX, I got all my GLX for free from the SPS airdrop. I'll probably take some of that and maybe use that to start buying my team. But either way, like it's, it's something that I want to be involved with and see how it evolves over time. So that is all I have in this video for you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Maybe you guys took away something else uh, or, so, or maybe I skipped over something that I should have talked about, but otherwise I will catch you all in the next video and see you around the game. Take care.